Hello there, Julie Hirschberg here from Reactive Physical Therapy and Wellness to share another neuroanatomy nugget. I pretty much live and breathe neuroanatomy. I truly love it in my everyday practice. And as you can see, all you need is lobe. I love the brain. I love the cortex. I love the connections. And I'm bringing my handy model here. This is something that was created for the hybrid curriculum at USC, and I just have it at home and use it all the time. But today we're talking about the posterior parietal lobe, and it's right here. I'm gonna put a little, a little spot on there, our, our Play-Doh, but the posterior parietal cortex is posterior in the parietal lobe. Here's the primary somatosensory cortex that's in the parietal lobe. There's our primary motor cortex in the frontal lobe. And the posterior parietal is just between the somatosensory cortex and our visual cortex. And it's a really cool part of the brain because it is a source of integration. It's also called a sensory association cortex because it brings in visual, auditory, emotional information with our sensory information to make sense of the world, make sense of ourselves. And it really becomes very important when we think about a person that is having a hard time sensing where their body is in space. And it's not a pure sensory deficit. Deficit. It's not a pure proprioceptive deficit. It's a higher order sensory deficit. So you might have heard that term before, higher order sensation. Things like graphesthesia, stereognosis, uh, extinction or double simultaneous stimulation. Those are all ways that we test the posterior parietal cortex. And what's really important is that when somebody's experiencing those symptoms, we test it and we can train it Thank goodness, right? So we can really help that person who's feeling kind of disconnected from their body or even disembodied. We can help them reconnect by training those functions of the posterior parietal cortex. This kind of disconnection can help can happen in many disorders. Central pain, functional neurologic disorders, dystonia are a few examples when this can occur. And if we test it, like testing graphesthesia, sensory discrimination, localization, uh, stereognosis, if we test it and see the impairment, we can then go through and help with the reconnection through training. So we can train through graphesthesia, through stereognosis. We can train through discrimination and localization. And this is often that hidden hidden piece that we have we might have missed with people. So I've created a sensory training uh a sensory mapping cheat sheet for you that you can download. It's based off some great work by a group actually more in the orthopedic world, they're doing a study in frozen shoulder where there's deficits here and they're training and seeing that it also improves pain. So um, download it. It's a great, uh, great resource that you can use that I've been using a lot in my own practice. And re relearning, helping recreate these connections. This is all about central nervous system connectivity, which is really what our next weekend course is about, is how do we cultivate that connectivity? How do we cultivate some of those associations in the cerebral cortex to improve the lives of the people that we work with. So that course is coming out October 10th and 11th. It's all online, it's live. You can submit cases and get feedback. It's with PTs, OTs, and physicians. It's going to be phenomenal. And through the end of August, it is $100 off. So sign up before the end of August. There is a code that goes with that. It's 100 off 2020. And um, we hope you can join us to learn even more about how we can cultivate these connections. And thanks so much for nerding out with me and my brain model today. Um, take your all you need is lobe into the weekend and have a really good one.